Don't take life too seriously. Nobody gets out alive anyway. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's good advice for people. Uh, this is your phone and I'm going to make a, a video based on something I am very interested in. But it actually took me a while to think about making this video. I was just there on the old internet box trying to think, oh, what am I going to make a video about next? I was looking for some boring articles thinking, oh, what will I do? But eventually decided, I'll do something I'm, uh, I'm really interested in, but just haven't really thought of it lately. But anyway, here we go. Uh, how, fitness has, how far fitness has fallen? Okay, so you're pathetic, really. According to the latest research, human fitness has increased so dramatically in recent years that even the strongest would consider ancient men to be, well, monsters. Yeah, sure, look at me. Do I look fit to you? Maybe. But to them, no. No, they'd be way better. And they wouldn't be earning big money, driving big cars and, and big houses. They'd be all the modest guys. They'd be all just another one of the lads. Uh, top class fitness. Uh, thinking nothing of it. Oh, you know, I, just, I do stuff to survive, yeah, like, have to get enough food and all that, so yeah, you know, that's how I get fit, yeah, it's nothing, nothing, uh, nothing special, okay, so, if you were to cross paths with some of the, your farming ancestors, circa 7 half to 2000 BC, he'd shove you to the ground, kick sand in your face, and jog off into the sunset with your mace sung over his shoulder, uh, I don't know about that, well, they really, well, maybe, uh, and either with someone else's partner or someone over his shoulder, you'd probably never catch up to him. Such has been our muscular cell decline in only a handful of millennia. Yeah, I mean, even the fittest ones are crap. I mean, just think about it, sure. I'm on a break now, last six days from running, and I've been really lazy, not doing much exercise at all. So, uh, though I think that's probably benefit me in some ways, hopefully. But, um, still, you know, it's hard for me to, it's hard for us to get fit because we spend so much of our early lives, uh, Sit down in chairs, like the one I am on. Well, the one I was on. The one I am on now. Yeah, so that's the thing. We're all just, uh, it's hard then, you know, say, and we're just victims of authority, really. It's just for sitting in a classroom all day, so we have to commute long distances to get to school and then just spend the whole day sitting down and uh, they're on fit then. And it really just it starts at a young age, really. I mean, it's just... That's the way it is. We, people are obsessed with this money. They think they're so great because they have a good car, but really they're not. They're just, they drive everywhere and they have the car doing everything for them. And that's why they're so unfit. All right, so here we go. So, uh, even our most highly trained athletes pale in comparison to these ancestors of ours, says Dr. Collins Shaw. Okay, great. Uh, we're certainly weaker than we used to be. Uh, Alison McIntosh, one of Shaw's PAVE colleagues, thinks so too. She's the one whose recent paper from Athletes to Couch Potatoes Humans through 6,000 years of farming claims that when Central Europeans made the transition from hunter-gatherer societies to agricultural ones, men's lower limbs strengthened and overall mobility decreased, even more so th uh, than among women. Yeah, lower limb. Yeah. Should look at those legs. All oh, those pussy legs. They're not going to get me far these days, are they? Nah, but I'm working on it. Well, not at the moment, but we get back training when I try to improve myself even more. Just, you know. And think nothing of it. Don't think you're great because you're good at running. Because you really are pathetic compared to these hunter-gatherers or tanks. Okay, so uh, McTosh, Cambridge, uh, PhD candidate, compared lesser scanned femurs and tibia of scalped kisses from around 3,300 BC to 80, 850. She then cross-checked her findings. Oh yeah, so she's looking at wrong um, uh, bodies from a thousand years ago. She's probably going to compare them to now. Is she? Is she? Is she? Is she? Yeah. And found that this, the ability among male farmers to move th about their environment 3,703 years ago was, on average, a level near that of today's student cross country runners. What? Student cross country runners? Jeez, I thought they'd be better than that. You're saying they're monsters compared to even the fittest trained. Now, that seems like a bit of a contradiction. But maybe they had a better all around level of fitness. I mean, you know, that's the thing, you know, cross country runners, they tend to be good at running. They might not be good at, they're probably not good at swimming or, uh, I don't know, weightlifting or. Um, building houses, but they probably had a better all around level of fitness, or did they? We'll read on. So, our overall strength is kind of cool. As the technologies improved and men and women's tasks diversified, he became less active. The result today's man is not only more sedentary than ever before, but compared to men of yawn, I don't know what that means. Yawn. I'm going to look that up. Uh, yawn. Yawn definition. Yawn. Oh. Oh, I don't know what that, that means. Okay, so here we go. Let's just say uh, 
We do. Uh, men's, today's man is not only more sedentary than ever before, but compared to men of yon, we're practically enfeebled. We do much, much less than our ancestors, says Rob Wolf, ancestor of the Paleo Studio Solution. And our skeletons affect this in de decrease in activity. Yeah, so that's the thing, we're just, we're doing less. This thing's sitting down in showers and all that, and, uh. Yeah, you know, people could. People look at our, uh. The running time is to say a 5k, they think 20 minutes is a very good time. So it's really not, it's slow. I mean, if you get a, a, an elite athlete to do a 20 minute 5k, it'll look like he's walking. You know, it's just that people aren't as fit and it looks kind of hard. And when they're doing it, it feels hard. That's the thing. This kind of physical being bonus strength has led to osteoporosis, decrease in fitness, obesity, and myriad other problems and diseases. Ironically, we have an overabundance of nutrition and we train better, says Shaw. We're overweight or we're not challenging our bodies like we used to. Yeah, they're overabundance in nutrition, yeah, that doesn't that's not helping us. I mean I think it was just back in the day they were getting adequate nutrition. That was that's what that was the right thing to do. And they had a balanced diet rather than us now just you know all the crap. <laughs> the the oh, vegetable soup that he's very bad for you. Okay. The average US citizen is, is considerably less fit than the average hunter gatherer or farther, says. I'm trying to get a farther. Wait, is that guy who uh, works in the forest? I will look that up. And we will come up with an answer. Forager. Forager is one who forages, looks for forage. <sighs> What's forager mean history? The acquisition of food by hunting, fishing, or the hunt got or the gathering of plant matter. Oh, foragers, okay. I would have thought that'd be more or less the same as hunter gather, but anyway. Uh the average US citizen considered as fish. I'd say it's in other countries as well, third world. Uh, the lesson to be learned is not from early farmers, their dietary and exercise patterns, but rather from our hunter gatherer ancestors and their dietary and exercise. What? From early farmers and their dietary and exercise, rather from our hunter gatherers. Oh, yeah, hunter gatherers, yeah. These examples represent the norms for our species and the environmental experiences which conditioned our germ genome. That's the thing, we've changed our world for the worse. I mean, more and more houses, cars, busy roads, buildings, uh, less and less of the old na nature, the uh, the fields, the trees and all that, it's all gone. So, you know, I made a, a video on how we can help the environment, such as not shaving and growing beards. Nah, nah, not really. But I think growing a beard is uh, supposed to be natural for adult males. It just shows that you're a sign of maturity, I guess. So Cordain for one thinks we should eat and live like our hunter gatherer ancestors. Pfft, well, I don't think that's gonna happen though, anytime soon. Whose meat heavy diets <laughs> Yeah, right. Gave them more muscle mass and enhanced their athletic abilities and performance. Wolf would add in weight training, stretching, and in particular cross country running, because it challenges our bodies in the same ways hunter gatherers had to navigate uneven terrain and the ups and downs of hills, all of which increased our physical robustness. They said they're meat heavy diets, but I heard somewhere else that they're mostly uh, herbivore. They only ate uh, animals if there was a shortage of plant foods, or else if, if somebody was um, it took so much energy to get um, those big animals. You know, you have to be. She was didn't have the speed to cast them over a short distance, so we had to run over a long distance and cast them over hours. And um, or else you find them uh, from leftovers from other carnivores. Okay. So what is, uh, oh wait, where, where are we? Uh, do all that you can to reclaim your physical, or your aging potential, advisor. If folks train hard, they can achieve remarkable levels of f physical development. Yeah, patience, patience. All right, so, uh, PD, okay. Let's shift some metabolism. So that it is geared more towards carbohydrate. Okay, uh, let's see what else. Uh, how fit were the hunters and gatherers? It depends on what you mean by fit. If you think, if you are thinking of today's standards for fit for Americans, uh, then the answer may be it depends. If you look across time, the answer is that they were as fit as they needed to be in order to survive. And yeah, as fit as they need to survive. You know, that's that's the thing. A lot of people just going along with the crowds, just and all that. As fit as you need to be. I mean, okay, so what? You walk a mile down to the bus stop. You take the bus, you walk a half mile to get to your workplace, you sit down the whole time. You walk a half mile from your workplace to the bus stop, you take the bus, and then you walk a mile to get home. So what, you walk, what, three miles? Yeah, you know, you need to be able to do that. So you do do that, okay? 
but you know the often the, the average sedentary lazy person after doing that is not going to go off for a 10 mile run in the evening no it's just I don't know so maybe just don't do it okay so that, that is a good answer good start to the answer I study anthropology in the early 80s hunter-gatherers live in a very demanding world uh, their ability to eat today and so survive for tomorrow depends on a lot of factors outside their control they range far and wide looking for plant and animal based foodstuffs mostly plants from what i've heard the amount of ranging and hunting requires them to eat enough to cover their activities and then some what they are at the mercy of weather and breeding ca capabilities of the plants and animals around them if there's a drought is there a drought is there a flood during pollination time has the main popula uh, populator of stable vegetables suffered a setback in numbers? Is there a disease affecting their primary meat-bearing species, which they wouldn't eat much of anyway? Uh, then there is the question of disease that affects the human population. hunter gatherer societies don't have hygiene resources that people in those societies do. Yeah, but they lived in a smaller uh, environment, so they, didn't, they could get away from it. I mean, uh, if you look in industrial times and all that, it was mostly urban areas where they were suffering from lack of hygiene and all that in... in more uh, rural areas uh, they got away from it more it's a smaller disease to spread as well or something oh yeah as a result they are prone to being infected with a wide range of diseases and are parasites traditional people don't think in terms of being physically fit like we do they tend to think more in terms of am I able to do everything I have to in order to survive yeah so very fit it's coming from under guys to walk uh... so yeah there we go it mainly comes down to what do you need to do every day to get your stuff done, to get the food, to get your shelter and all that. So, you know, you can start off by making it practical. You know, getting rid of the old uh, cars and stuff and just getting the bike shit or walking, running places. Just, yeah, doing it that way, you know what I mean? Because you feel like then it's already a chore, even if you don't enjoy it, you feel like it's something that has to be done. You know, say you want to go somewhere, if you want to cycle, say, Seven miles, get somewhere you want to go. So some event you really want to do and then cycle back. If you really want to go to that event, you probably you probably will do it, even if you're not a big fan of cycling. Because, you know, it's that event. Like, the same way some people don't enjoy just being stuck in a train, going a four-hour train journey. They do it to get somewhere, if you know what I mean. That's the thing. That when you're going for a 